Good morning. So first of all, to Autumn, who spoke so be beautifully to us, from her people, from her community, and from her heart. I want to express, and I think she might have left the room, I want to express my deep thanks. It is words like that that hit home. Because what we may have done to our planet, what we may have done to its resources, it is so very crystal clear that we meet, need to shift our ways and change the way we interact with nature. And so standing before you here today, speaking on the Landscapes Forum, is a perfect end for me to this, I don't know how many days I've been in New York City, but to this whirlwind. In this room, you have the energy. In this room, you have the commitment. In this room, we have the uh, solutions. And when I look and hear the numbers that Tony just gave us and the people who are connected, we can do this. Let's just do this. So, uh, and to Bill, who, who reflected on the broader tapestry of involvement and engagement and who reflected on people in the streets, Thank you, Bill, also for your active push for, from the 350 campaign. And obviously, to Christian, for the phenomenal leadership that Germany has shown. Absolutely brilliant. I was a fellow journey woman in the same canoe as we launched the Bond Challenge and as we moved forward. And we were striving towards 150, and we just blasted right past it. I just checked www.bondchallenge.org, by the way. And it is updated all the time. It is mapped, and it's geo-mapped, and you can reference it. Um, I just checked it before coming up. 170 million hectares. Um, so not bad. N nearly half a billion in committed funds. So now that the decade has got a name and an address, and a commitment and a focus that has essentially raised the New York Declaration, raised the Bond Challenge. New York Declaration speaks to standing for us. Bond Challenge speaks to restoration. Both of these, these are two hands clapping. Both are critical. Now that we have this decade, this is now what stands before us. Because nature is our greatest ally. Nature is under threat. We have put nature under threat. We know that land degradation impacts about 3.2 billion people. 3.2 billion people who are seeking to eke a living out of marginal lands. And we know that land degradation costs about 10% of GDP in, in losses on biodiversity and ecosystem services. So whilst we are not putting dollar signs on trees, we have to understand that when the land can no longer produce, that has a cost, a cost to humans, a cost to societies, and yes, a cost to development and a cost on the SDGs. And so that that is the reality. But there are these great processes that are now set in, uh, in motion. Nature-based solutions. I'm so pleased that the rest of the world had discovered that the climate world has discovered that, hello, you know, it's actually nature. <laughs> um, it's good. Um, so here we are, 25 years later, and this is really good. Uh, because while some of us have been trying to say, yes, of course we have to decarbonize our economies. Yes, of course we need to exit from uh, hydrocarbon-based fuels. Yes, of course. But you can't do that without having a vibrant nature that provides the food, the air, and the water for us to live. We can't do that as we're hurtling towards 10 billion people on this magnificent planet without taking care of it. So the fact that now, since Rio first time, when we met and we came up with these three conventions, the fact that now these conventions are seen as a trilogy, the fact that now we understand that you can't do desertification and land degradation control without addressing biodiversity. You can't address climate change without getting into biodiversity and land. It's so good. And so, fasten your seatbelts, ladies and gentlemen, because the next decade is going to be the critical decade. We hold in our hands this frightening responsibility, this awesome responsibility to forever change the very trajectory of our planet. Now, this is not supposed to be like that. 
It is not supposed to be that human beings hold that in their hands. The planetary boundaries and the way of the world is supposed to be different, but we have messed with its systems. And so this next decade is the decade. Some of us who are a little longer in the tooth, we've been saying the window is closing, but now I really mean it. <laughs> and so does IPCC, and so does uh, IPBES, and so does the science, and so do our children in the streets. So restoration, therefore, is happening, and we know the proven benefits, and we know that the potential is untapped. This great green wall that we are talking about in the Sahel, for example, we understand that this, these countries are under extreme duress on the front line of the climatic impacts that we have caused them, but for which they have done nothing to cause. And we understand that restoration is entirely possible if we invest in nature. We've seen commitments through the nature-based solutions track here at the Climate Summit where countries have stepped up, been leaning in, and made commitments. It's not enough. They at the same time need to make commitment on decarbonization. You don't get a jail uh, a card jail, what is it called? Jail, I can never say that. <laughs> get out of jail card free. Um, <laughs> just by planting trees. You must decarbonize. These two things go together. Now, um, I, ha I come to you basically with five thoughts. The first one is, you've got to get it right at the top. It's got to be at the top of the agenda. It's got to be at the top of what we're doing. It's got to be clear at the cabinet level. It can't just be done and I love ministries of environment for obvious reasons, but it can't just be a ministry of environment commitment. This restoration decade is a decade about our very survival. So building on the bond challenge, building on the New York Declaration, we have to restore and we have to lean in. But the quality of what we restore matters. We don't want quote unquote green deserts. We don't want monoculture. We don't want exotics that don't belong. We want to get multiple benefits. We want to get rich biodiversity. We want to get vibrant landscapes. And the way we get that is by planting and ensuring that what we plant is good for the environment and good for nature. So that matters. Um, we need to reach for higher ambition and the quality is as important as the quantity. And so we need to hold one another to account on that score. So don't just count green acres of the same thing, but count green acres of lush, rich nature. Um, and then we need to ensure that cities and individuals and landowners also come into the fore because nature doesn't care where these things are planted. And so you can make sure that, uh, and to get these multiple benefits, planting in cities, and generally you bring down dust, you bring down the temperature, you make them safer, you make them more livable than living in a concrete jungle. So that's on the, on the forestry side, but obviously we also want to restore our kelp forests, which are underwater forests, and all other landscapes, it goes without saying. And so ensuring buy-in from all sectors matters. So the first thing is build on what we have, start at the top, make it high quality. Second message is get the funding lined up, right? Get the funding lined up. Now, we may roughly need about $800 billion to restore, the, uh, 300, uh, to restore what we need to restore. It may sound like a lot, but, but it really isn't. I mean, $800 billion? No. No, not really. Uh, why is that? Because it's only two years worth of fossil fuel subsidy. Just think of that. So there is an opportunity. There is an opportunity to shift resources around, and we have to be unshy about this. Um, this is really what we need to think about. Um, now, we also need to ensure that companies uh, that do brilliant work, they feed us, they clothe us, they house us, so don't beat up on them because they're part of the broader system. But they too need to mend their ways just like you and I in our consumption need to mend our ways. So vote with your dollar bills as you shop, please, or euros or, 
or whatever you shop with. Um, but, but also companies can shift the needle as they grow our food, as they grow our timber to ensure that we can live, as they grow our textile to ensure that we can clothe ourselves make sure that they too become part of the solution and that they too step in and deliver smart, nature-positive, landscape-positive products. And lobby for that. Ensure that, and lobby, for example, on labeling. What does nature-positive and landscape-positive labeling look like? Engage with policymakers on these exact things. And the banking sector that can choose to invest in nature positive and landscape positive elements or not, engage with them and your pension fund and think around this. We were very proud to, ensure, to launch in the presence of the Secretary General the principles for responsible banking here on the sidelines of this uh, UNGA. These principles one-third of all banks in the world have signed that they will move towards, because they're not there today, we cannot claim that they're there today, uh, being aligned with the SDGs, including SDGs 13, 14, and 15, and 6, and all the other ones. So that's quite a but it's a journey, so we can't point fingers now, but they've signed up that they're taking this journey with us, and that's what matters. So engage um, and get the funding in place. Break into these sectors of agriculture, as of textiles, of uh, infrastructure, etc. as I say. Uh, and ensure that those in the boardrooms get these messages because that's where often decisions are taken. And I applaud all the CEOs who've been here at UNGA during this week and who are leaning in and understanding that yes, we need food, and yes, we need clothing, and yes, we need housing, but we need to do this in a sustainable world, work with them. My third message is that the right restoration needs to be done on the right ecosystems. So we had a recent IRP International Resources Panel, check it out, IRP International Resources Panel, lots of data there um, that, that looked at risks and trade-offs and co-benefits. I've spoken about monoculture, it destroys our soil. Um, but so get it right, ensure that it is soil enhancing, soil enriching, uh, not water draining, uh, not aquifer draining, not nitrate uh, uh, draining, etc. Ensure that these things can be nature positive and use, learn from the traditional custodians of, custodians of our land, our indigenous people. We, many of us who have become urbanized, we have forgotten the, the language but we heard from autumn and I remember my grandparents speaking on some of these issues of wisdom and insight learn from that but do not appropriate um, now the fourth thing that I want to say is um, think about both cities and farmland I've kind of touched upon that but think about biodiversity positive agriculture think about biodiversity rich cities think about wise construction I often speak about the fact that Barcelona and Atlanta have the same amount of people in them, but one city is 10 times larger than the other. And if you were to select which city you would find more livable, you might find the older city more livable, the more dense, but with higher tree cover and a cozier feel and not the sprawl. Now, this is not to say that Atlanta is not a marvelous city, because it surely is. But as we plan new cities and we are building new infrastructure, the equivalent of Paris a week, as that infrastructure goes down, ensure that it is smart, dense, livable and green. And my last message is get everyone on board. This is an action decade. This is where we need to make a difference and it is not good enough just to have decade upon decade of something. Each of these decades uh, whether, have to have meaning and you are the community that will make this one meaningful. Um, so we together with our friends in FAO are extremely pleased to have been asked to sort of be the co-custodians, but this is not an exclusive ownership to the country. We want everyone crowded in, everyone taking ownership, everyone taking part. Because I think, as we just heard um, from 
uh, both, well, from Tony as well as Christian, if we are running this marathon, first of all, we pace ourselves so that we can make sure to make it to the finish line. That's the paces. But we also have to run and run hard and with endurance and not give up. Um, it's critical that we prepare well, prepare so that we can go further, go higher. It's critical that as we prepare, we think about how we could get multiple benefits across all the re across all the conventions and across all the SDGs. And act, and it's critical that we think of nature just not as a carbon bank, but we think it as nature as this vibrant Mother Earth that gives us all our identity and our presence. Because when we protect nature, nature protects us. Thank you.